All right, so solving trig identity or solving trig equations using trig identities is exactly the same as solving trig equations. Regularly, um, you have to pay attention to the domain that you're in. And what we need to recognize is that we can use some identities to help us out. So in this case, I'm going to divide both sides by cos x. So I'm not actually getting rid of it. But what I'm doing is this is going to be able to change or this sine x over cos x to tan x equals 2. Um, we need to recognize that cos x can't equal 0, or this would become undefined. So x cannot equal pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2. That's from our unit circle. But now all I have to do is actually solve this, like a regular trig equation, which if we think back to the cast rule, tan is positive in quadrant 1, quadrant 3. Our related acute angle is going to be the tan inverse of 2. We're using radians, so make sure your calculator is in radians. That's 1.11. In quadrant 1, that's just going to be x is equal to 1.11. Now in quadrant 3, we're going to have x is equal to pi plus 1.11. So that is going to be 3.14, so that's going to be 4 point about 25, and we're done. Okay, so all we did was we used our trig identity up top here to get rid of one of the trig functions. Okay, right, let's look at a little bit harder question here. Now this one actually involves the double angle identities. So what we're going to do is we're going to have 4 times 2 sine x cos x and minus 2 equals 0. Now I'm going to take the negative 2 and the 4 over to the other side. So I'm going to get 2 sine x cos x equals 2 divided by 4 would be 1 half. So this actually becomes sine 2x. Remember I said it was a double angle identity equals a half. Well, a half is actually from one of our special triangles. Okay, so we have 1, 2, or sorry, 1, 2, root 3, pi by 6, pi by 3. If we're doing sine, we have 1 over 2. So this is telling me that the related acute angle is pi by 6. Sine is positive in quadrants 1 and 2. So we know our quadrant 1, normally we'd write x equals, we're going to have to write 2x equals. 2x equals pi by 6. That means that x is equal to pi by 12. Okay, in quadrant 2, we have 2x equals pi minus pi by 6. So 2x equals 5 pi by 6. And x is equal to 5 pi by 12. Now this question is between 0 and pi. So we're done. But if this was between 0 and 2 pi, what we'd actually have to do is add one cycle. Now this graph, if I were to graph this, because it's sine 2x, what that means is that the graph completes one full cycle in pi units. And then the next full cycle would be 2 pi. And 2 pi is our typical um, domain that we solve things in. So right now, we've got a solution here and here. We would actually also need to include this solution and this solution. The way we do that is by adding 6 pi over 6, or pi. So this would become 7 pi over 12, and this would become 11 pi over 12. Okay, I'm showing you that because you will run into that in the textbook when you're between 0 and 2 pi, and there's multiple answers. You need to add one more cycle in. Okay, well, let's try this last question. So this last question is actually pretty difficult. Okay, it's not difficult in the algebra if you slowly work through it. 
So sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x minus cos 2x is equal to cos squared minus sine squared. Now I'm going to make that 1 into sine and cos as well. You don't actually have to. There are other ways to do this, but I want to have only sine and cos equal 0. Okay. Now the nice thing about doing it this way is on this line, we're going to see that some stuff is going to cancel out here. And on the next line, we're actually going to be able to cancel some more stuff. out. So the two cos x's will cancel because we've got a minus and a plus. We're left with 2 sine squared x plus 2 sine x cos x equals 0. Well, we can divide those two 2's out. They would go to the other side and go away. And then we can actually factor out a sine x. Alright, and now just like if we were to solve like a quadratic or something, I'm going to split this up. I'm going to make it sine x equals 0 or sine x plus cos x equals 0. Now if sine x equals 0, we know that x is equal to, this is when the y value in our unit circle is equal to 0. So this is telling us at 0 pi and 2 pi, we have our solutions. But this graph is only between 0 and pi, so we're not going to include that value. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to look at is this second one. What I'm going to do, there's a couple different ways you can actually solve this one, but what I'm going to do is just make it sine x equals negative cos x. Well, the only time that sine x and cos x are equal to one another is when we're looking at our special triangle, if we have 1, 1, and root 2. Now, the only difference between sine x equals negative cos x is the sines are different. So we know our related acute angle is going to be equal to pi by 4. But when, are, when do we have different sines? So... When we have different signs, well, we have the same sign in this one, they're both positive. We have the same sign in this one, they're both negative. Here in quadrant 4, cos is positive and sine is negative. And here, sine is positive and cos is negative. So we know we're working in quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. Well, in quadrant 2, we would have x equals pi minus pi by 4, and we'd get 3 pi by 4. In quadrant 4, we'd get x equals 2 pi minus pi by 4, and we'd get 7 pi by 4. Now again, this is out of our domain, so we wouldn't have to include that. We'd only have to include this answer and this answer. Okay, if we were to go to 2 pi, all we would do is we would bring these back in, and that would be 2 pi. So we'd bring those two answers back in. Okay, so try the questions associated with this.